Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to day 19 of Vlogmas. Um, so I'm going to be doing a video today that I've never, ever, ever done before and that is try a chapter. Now I know most people do this because they're either going to do an unhaul or they're going to see what they want to read next. I'm mainly thinking about what I want to read in 2020 because these are the books that I've had on my shelf for quite a long time and I really have just been looking past them and looking over them so I want to see if my interest is still there and where they're going to be sitting because most of them I still do want to read again because I'm still curious about the stories um, but I think I just need to gauge where in the TBR pile that they're going to be resting. So let's start. Number one is Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. Now the reason why I picked this book up is because one it is YA, two it is thoroughly thoroughly lauded to be fantastic. Uh, three, I think it's set in, well obviously Middle Eastern, but also it has a character who is not skinny, amazingly athletic, who can just like pick up a sword and then also master five languages. So the main character is flawed, she isn't perfect, she's human, <laughs> so which is nice. Um, so that instantly got my attention. Now, what will I think of the first chapter? I think I haven't read a YA in a while, I've read, been reading middle grade, but I, I really want to see how I feel about the main character because I think that's going to be the driving force for this novel. So give me just a moment, I'll be right back. Alright, so that was uh, quite an action-packed first chapter. Um, yeah, not too bad actually, I really liked how much they introduced the character um, history and background so you can really get a grasp on her straight away. Obviously, it's a very trying time because she was a very emotional character throughout and um, much of her own agency has been taken away from her. So um, I, I just need to wait for that kind of kick-ass character agency or a female, you know, desire to do something kicks in. But I feel like this is going to be a fun read, so I might have to read this a bit earlier in the, in the year. Next is Empire of Silence by Christopher Rudolcio. Rudolcio? Um, this is an epic sci-fi fantasy, sci-fi fantasy, uh, epic science fiction, I think it's space, space travel, so that's sci-fi. Um, so this one was given to me by the wonderful rep of Hachette who um, published the book in Australia and um, I wanted to try this because it's been getting some pretty good reviews and I haven't read that much sci-fi and I want to, I want to really expand my sci-fi palette. So uh, let's get straight into this one. Okay, so lots of world building is quite a, it, well, I mean, it's not a short chapter by any means, tiny writing by the way, but um, it's, it's, it's got a good development. So it has this kind of like mystic third voice or internalized monologue to open with to give like this really grand epic like introduction. And then it kind of goes into a character describing what it was you know, their backstory, you know, being born and, um, you know, coming up and being raised in a certain lifestyle. And then the main character, they kind of settle into this almost pseudo sci-fi night scene. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not too sure what to feel about it yet. I feel like this is one of those books you have to get at least, you know, five to ten chapters into it before it really starts to sink into you. So yeah, it didn't catch me straight off the bat. It's got a lot of world building in that early chapter, so it's feeling like an epic fantasy with sci-fi elements. Um, yeah, so but it still it was quite fun. I enjoyed it. We'll see how we go. Next I have Earth Star, which is by Janet Edwards, Only She Can Save the World. It's YA again. I picked this up ages ago. This is like such a beautiful cover. I was just actually, this is a cover by, it's one of those cover by moments, but I thought it's sci-fi dystopian YA, so it sounded pretty good, and it wasn't the whole Hunger Games dystopian at the time. So I was really curious to pick it up, um, but I don't really know too much about it, so let's just see what it's like. Alright, so this one, after reading the epic sci-fi fantasy one, going back to this YA felt very um, character driven. Which is good, I do love a character driven novel, but I feel like the sci-fi is not going to be as dense. Um, even though it should be, because she's supposed to be this kick-ass military, you know, highest honoured person. It, it felt, it felt very, I'm not sure, I think this is probably going to be at the bottom of the list. Um, if you've read it, let me know if you loved it, because 
yeah, it didn't really appeal to me straight off the bat. That first chapter was a, a bit wishy-washy for my, my taste. It didn't give you the whole background and introduction to the character and really feel like you're there with them. Okay, so next we have Range of Ghosts by Elizabeth Beer. This one I got... Beer, sorry, Bear. <laughs> this one I got when I was in the US. I haven't ha seen much of Elizabeth Bear's stuff over here in Australia. Um, but yeah, I picked this up because the cover is stunning, may I just say. Um, but yeah, so that really was the one that sold it to me. Um, it's a fantasy. There's horses. It's set in like Mongol... Middle Eastern area so I thought it'd be a very interesting read to try and I wanted to try Elizabeth Bear's work so this one felt like the best approach rather than sci-fi because I'm more fantasy-esque. Okay this opening was fantastic I thought it was going to be a bit like on the heavy side of description description but it was really intense it was great like this guy's just walking away from this completely ravaged city he's the last one that survived and oh that was great. That was really good. I think this is going to be probably number one on my list to read. Um, but yeah, that was fantastic. I really thoroughly enjoyed that first chapter. It just wants me to keep keep reading because there's just such huge questions behind, you, you know, the destruction, the reason for it, this, this guy who's just trying to realize what's happened in his life and all this chaos around him. It was it was just really good. So yeah, I think this is boosted up straight up that pile to the top spot, I think. Okay, so the next one is, I got this after I read Six of Crows, which is probably a bad idea, but this is like a heist novel, and I was just so in the mood for a fantasy heist novel after Six of Crows, because there's only so many times you can read that novel before like the pages fall out. Um, but yeah, so I picked this up, it's The Thieves of Fate, book one by Tracy Townsend, and basically there's this mystical artifact that comes to light and she the main character Rowena works as a black market runner and she has to basically hunt it down but something happens that um, confronts her and she has to seek help so she's not as strong or powerful as she thinks she might be so they have a very um, curious band of like gang <laughs> to try and uh, steal this book from a very powerful um, alchemist I believe it's the alchemist but yeah so let's let's just try the first chapter the cover though is amazing it's very shiny but I hope you can see it it's really really cool cover but um, yeah it sounds like almost steampunky esque even from the clothing looks steampunky so let's have a look okay so this one had a great character introduction you immediately introduced into the main character Rowan as her um, the conflict that she's facing and um, how she is there's almost a secret b behind her doings I'm um, also into the market like her boss and everything it's very much like Oliver Twist vibes <laughs> to this story like it's almost as if she's Oliver Twist and um, her boss is Fagin it just I don't know I don't know why I felt like that it just felt like that but um, it's definitely got steampunky vibes to it, which I will love. I do love when they mix a bit of historical, like, elements to it. So it feels like I'm reading a heist novel, a, you know, magical heist novel set in, you know, Victorian England, which sounds perfectly fantastic fun to me. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not sure about this one. It didn't, st it still didn't grab me um, with character-wise. That voice wasn't feeling, you know fully formed yet but I feel like the description and the the place was really clear so that is also another thing I love if they can really put you into the smells and surroundings of the characters it's just fantastic so I definitely want to see how this goes because I really would love to read another heist novel and if it's a steampunky heist novel I think I'll be okay with that okay so that was my try novel video um yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I really did. It kind of just reawakens you to so many different types of and styles of writing within such a short time. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think I've got a very full range. I wasn't too impressed by one or two of the books there. But if you've read any of them, let me know down below because I'd love to get a bit more advice about these books. Just reviews and things would be great. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye.